Okay, so this is going to be my personal story on running out of, out of ammo, um, conducting effective reloads, um, and implementing a backup weapon. Before we get started, no, this isn't some uh, crazy citizen involved shooting or anything like that. This is a hunting story, and it takes place on personal property in an urban area where you're not really supposed to shoot firearms. So in this case, I was using the gun that I always keep loaded in my truck, my Youth Ruger 1022. The reason I like this gun, um, it's small, lightweight, compact, easy to operate, accurate, um, uh, pretty reliable, and um, uh, mostly it's uh, it's just easy to swing around a cab. It's not really that huge. Now, what this is is a kind of a pest control kind of hunting story. So, um, in the area I live in, I have a couple of friends who live near the river that cuts through the middle of our town, um, and needless to say, they get plenty of wildlife on their personal property. Um, they call me at uh, early times in the morning or late times in the afternoon to go dispatch that wildlife should it be legal to do so. Generally, the wildlife includes raccoons, skunks, and um, those yellow-bellied uh, marmots, kind of the rock chuck things that are like giant rats, like that big. Um, so that's generally what I get called for by my friends to come do. So <clears throat> this is how the story goes. Um, and I'm hoping by the end of the story, um, I'll be able to share with you um, everything I was able to pull off to accomplish the task at hand. And uh, maybe we can talk about some uh, lessons in the end that I learned that everybody else can take away from this. So here's how the story goes. I get a call at like 4.30. Hey, I see movement out by my, uh, my trash can near my big stack of pallets and between my big stack of wood. Okay, so um, go to my friend's house, get there at 5 o'clock, still dark out. And this was just recently. This is like September, early September. Okay, so still dark out. Um, I get to his house. I pull into his uh, driveway slash parking lot area. I pull around the side of the wood stack that he's referring to, and I see a uh, gray and black striped streak running across my headlights. I'm like, oh, okay, raccoons, that's what we got. Additionally, as I pulled around the wood stack to chase him, I see movement over here by the fence and movement over here at the opposite adjacent corner of the pallet stack next to the wood pile. So hopefully you can kind of get a layout of what's going on here. So, okay, I automatically think, okay, I got three coons to dispatch in one location. I've got... Um, if I remembered correctly, and I did, I had seven rounds on my gun. Um, uh, I didn't top off from the previous night that I'd been doing that same thing. Um, I think I can pull this off. So what I did was I chased this initial raccoon. We'll call him number one. Um, number one was the biggest one, about 20 pounds. Number two, uh, probably 12, 15 pounds. Number three was identical. Okay. So chase number one around the wood stack. Now, as far as the ammunition I use before I go any further, uh, Winchester Super X, I believe these are 37 grain. They're rated at like 1,330 feet per second. All they are is um, just a uh, copper-plated hollow point, um, wax-filled hollow point, so they cycle real well. They're real reliable, real fast, real accurate. I chronographed them out of this gun at about 1,280 feet per second, and upon inspection of previous wound channels from prior animals I've shot with these bullets, um, depending on what you shoot, they'll give you a liquefied crush cavity about the diameter of a nickel, um, anywhere between four and nine inches long, again, depending on what you shoot. So very effective ammunition. The reason I say that is it's going to come up in the comments later, probably, why did I need so many shots per raccoon to dispatch them? Well, you have to understand, like I said, this is in an urban area. These are not wildlife raccoons that are this big that you're shooting out of a tree like a squirrel. These are city coons. These are 20, 30 pounders that... I'm not actually outside the parameters of what my phone's able to film right now. So, I mean, big suckers, right? So, takes a couple of shots sometimes. Otherwise, they'll get away and they'll get under a house. They'll die and then they'll stink up the place and blah, blah, blah. So, not good. You want to kill them on the spot, or at least I do. So, here's how it goes. I chased him around the wood stack. Um, he froze uh, the, the whole deer in the headlights thing. Um, at this point, I had out my flashlight. I reached around and unzipped my uh, rifle case as I was driving, ripped the rifle out, charged around into it and rolled down both of my windows in the event that I needed to shoot out either side. Um, so as I pulled up around the corner of the wood stack, he was to my right. I used my stream light flashlight to light up my non-glow-in-the-dark uh, iron sights, and I got a good sight picture on him, and I cracked him right in the chest. Um, he kind of writhed around a little bit, jumped back up, um, and continued to run, so I shot him once more through the shoulders, dropped him where he stood. He was still crawling, shot him one more time. He did the little death dance. Shot, him a, um, shot at him an additional time and missed. Shot at him the last time. Shot number five. Hit him. Killed him. He's done. Right. Dispatch the first one. Okay. So moving on to number two. So um, I, w 
number two was over by the fence line. Number three was on now the opposite side of the wood stack from where I'm at. So I immediately turn out my passenger window to see if I can get a shot, or out of my driver's window to see if I can get a shot at him in the same fashion I did the last one. It'd be pretty efficient, right? So um, I was unsuccessful with that. He actually ran in front of the sight line of my windshield before I was able to do that. I hopped out of my truck, rested on the hood, uh, cracked off two shots at pat, pat, and I missed. So what I did was hop back in the truck and drove toward number two, who actually rounded the wood stack um, and went and uh, kind of like hopped between the, um, the, the stacks of wood that was there. Um, I stopped, I shot uh, one more time, and I hit him kind of in the hind end somewhere, and then he jumped into the wood stack. Um, so I, I jumped around the opposite side of the wood stack, approximately where I knew he was going, um, and then I parked the truck and got out on foot. So at this point, I'm on foot on the, let's see, east side of this wood stack. So um, what I wound up doing was I, I, I stood in one place where I knew he was going to wind up eventually because there's a big gap between the wood, and he, he came, you know, skittering this way. So I got a, um, on foot, I got a good sight picture on him between the uh, chunks of wood, pap, shot him through the front shoulders. Um, <clears throat> so uh, he ran actually from the wood stack over to the fence farther east, started to run along the fence line, um, kind of dragging his front shoulders along. So I knew, okay, um, he is injured pretty badly. He can't climb the fence and get away from me because, um, again, you want to dispatch him on the spot. Um, so what I wound up doing was resting on the um, open windowsill of my um, truck door, lined up a good shot from uh, quite a distance, and click. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I ran out of ammo. Um, in case you were counting, I believe five on the first one, um, three on the second one. Oh, I had, I had eight in it, sorry. Um, ran out of rounds. Oh, crap, right? So I jumped in the truck and started driving toward him, simultaneously dropping the magazine out of the gun, and opening the box of ammo I had on the center console and fingernailing him out uh, while I'm driving without looking, reloaded um, while steering the steering wheel with my knee, I'm approaching him. So I wound up getting four rounds into it, which I considered um, sufficient to finish the job, both for number two and number three, which is still on the north side of this wood stack. So that having been said, um, I chased him down in the truck, uh, reloaded without looking, slammed the magazine back in and charged it without looking, um, pointed the gun with the flashlight out the um, driver's side window. He froze, crack, right in the chest. He writhed around a little bit, crack, top of the head, done. So, coup number two is officially dispatched. <clears throat> so, I drove back to um, the wood stack for number three. Um, I dropped my magazine in the same fashion I did before, driving with my, driving with my knee, grabbed the last two rounds I had in this box and thumbed them into that magazine. So in case you're not counting, I have four rounds in this magazine at this point. So um, this raccoon ran around to the from the north side to the west side, so I pulled around the south side to shoot him out the passenger window, and that's what I did. Now, I couldn't quite get a shot at him out my passenger window, so I hopped out and leaned the gun over the hood, and uh, I shot at him, you know, pat, pat, pat. Um, so I believe I shot four at him, and I know for a fact I hit three out of four. Now, they were poor shot placement because this was a, about a 60-yard shot. This was a pretty long shot in between a stack of wood and a stack of pallets, okay? So, um, that having been said, I'm out of rounds, and he's still crawling toward the a gap in the wood stack. I knew I'd never see him again. He'd die in there. He'd stink because it's on personal property. That's not a good thing. I'm like, oh, crap, I got I to gotta get this thing now. So, forgetting I only had the four in there. Click. Ah, damn it. So... Dropped the gun in the seat of my truck, um, dropped the flashlight, went to grab the pistol on my hip. Um, now, the question will arise in the comments why I chose this pair for hunting purposes. Bear in mind, I did not choose this as a mated set for doing that intended purpose. This was incidental, and I happened to have my daily carry gun for that day on my hip, and that's what I used to dispatch him. Not the most preferable scenario under urban circumstances. But again, between two stacks of wood, private property, no cameras, um, you know, uh, you know, more or less dis um, muzzled sound level from in between the wood. So felt pretty comfortable doing it. Ripped my gun out of my holster, which in this case was my Glock Model 41. Used my um, accessory flashlight streamlight on it, TLR7. Um, he was crawling through. the He was halfway through the wood stack when I got up there. Um, pat, pat. Shot him twice with the pistol. Dropped him dead. All three dispatched. I pulled it off. So, stressful, difficult, overall pretty fun. So, 
now for now for the kind of the analyzation of this um, story, which I hope I gave enough detail to. So what all did what all did I pull off there? So, and this is not bragging. This is leading up to what we will learn as further lessons because I did make some mistakes here. So what did I learn? So first mistake didn't have my magazine all the way topped off and the gun I was intending to use at that time, and I had time to do it. I didn't do it. My bad. Um, so I had to implement a um, partial magazine reload, something that the FBI used to practice shortly after the Miami uh, Dade shooting. Um, the idea being load the minimum amount of rounds you need to get the job done um, without wasting too much time getting it fully loaded so you can get your gun back in the fight faster. Okay. Magazine reload. I know I didn't grab another magazine and jam it in. I just used the same one, but I dropped it out, push, pushed it back in, and uh, charged it up without looking. Okay, so oh, loaded that magazine without looking too. Um, after that, accurate shot placement, use of a handheld flashlight, um, and then use of a backup firearm in the event it's needed. So, that having been said, what can we learn from all this? Well, there's certainly some skills that would come in handy to pull something like this off, because this is not something that I would have been able to do had I not actually practiced some of these things on the range. Everything I've told you today, I've put into practice at the range uh, at some point or another, and it massively came in handy earlier this week. So, first and foremost, things that you should be able to do as a hunter, pest control person, self-defender, whatever it may be, you need to be able to operate the firearm you plan on using for that task accurately and effectively. So you notice most of my shot placement was actually pretty good. I'm going to say that was about 80% hit rate um, with a semi-auto 22 from long distances. That's pretty good, okay? So um, using handheld tools or accessories, okay? Um, the implementation of things not attached to your firearm to give yourself an advantage. Um, this is something you definitely should practice, especially if you have a gun that doesn't have some kind of a rail to mount something like that on and you're working in low-light situations. Um, uh, what else did I say on that subject? Oh, accessories. So using things to your advantage. Okay. Night sights, mounted flashlights. You notice I didn't actually retain this flashlight. I dropped this and the gun in my seat when I went to retrieve my sidearm, knowing the equipment that I had on it was sufficient to the task at hand. So, um, using tools. Okay. Um, conducting efficient reloads. That's the third thing you should be able to reload a magazine without looking. You should be able to uh, retrieve and implement a backup magazine for any firearm on your person without looking. Um, you should, uh, let's see, so that's uh, operate firearm effectively using tools, uh, conducting efficient reloads, reload without looking. Um, understanding and conducting efficient partial reloads when necessary. So, um, aside from having a backup magazine or something, um, the best I could do at that time was reload this one. I chose as a, I'm not going to say a tactical advantage. I'm not one of those, uh, one of those guys. Okay. So, um, for a timely advantage, um, I decided to reload the minimum amount of rounds that I knew I would need to get the job done as opposed to topping it off completely. Okay. So understanding and conducting efficient partial reloads is a must if you're only going to carry one magazine. Um, reloading magazines without specialty tools okay, and without looking. Um, extremely important, especially because I was actually driving while reloading. I never drove while I shot. In fact, the truck was always in park, but being able to operate a firearm safely while doing other things is important. Um, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, implementing backup weapons efficiently and effectively, okay? So I guess what I mean by that is... Um, Assessing the fact that you have a need for your backup firearm or a backup firearm if you happen to have one. Formulating a plan, following through with that plan, and ending up on top, okay? Being successful in that plan. So, implementing backup firearms. And uh, the last thing you should be able to do, um, take follow-up corrective actions that prevent the need for implementing these skills, okay? So it's good to practice these things. It's good to be able to do it. I'm glad I practiced it. I'm glad I was able to do it because I pulled off a very important task. At least I feel like um, that friend of mine in particular has a heck of a time getting up every morning, especially when it's cold or really hot out and picking up trash around his um, parking spaces because of wildlife. So um, I'm glad I had these skills. I was glad, I'm glad I was able to use them. I'm pretty happy that I actually pulled that off. I got three out of three. Nothing got away. Nothing died in an inconvenient location. So 
Um, I'm glad I had these skills, but I would have much preferred not having to use these skills because it was very stressful, required very fine motor skilled movements, and, you know, it's relatively overall dangerous. If you're operating a firearm and a vehicle at the same time, that's an added level of danger, not to mention the fact that um, you could screw up your procedure. I could put a bullet in this backwards. I could, you know, not have it. In, I, I could not seat the magazine all the way while I uh, latch the slide back or something like that. So um, I would have much preferred not to have to use these things. So follow up corrective a actions to prevent this sort of thing. Um, so what I did, first off, um, I determined that having only, if I did my math correctly, um, only had what, six or eight rounds in this box. And it turned out I needed more. Um, two more as it turned out, and I didn't have them. So keeping a full box additionally to my partial box in my truck. That's the first and foremost. Um, using a type of ammunition that is more effective and will dispatch a small game more quickly so I don't have to use so many shots per, like this. These are CCI Stingers. A uh, little bit lighter, but much faster. 32 grain, 1,640 feet per second advertised on the box out of my 22 long, or my Ruger 1022, I should say. I, I chronographed in about 15 and a half hundred feet per second, okay? So, um, still hollow points, still still plated, still accurate. Uh, much more effective. I probably would have used two of these on that first one instead of five, okay? So, keeping more ammo in the truck, or sufficient ammo in the truck, I should say. Using better ammunition. And last but not least... On the way here, or uh, on, on the way home from that, um, I, the first thing I did is stop at Sportsman's Warehouse. Okay. Backup equipment <laughs> in the event that you need it so you don't have to use less preferred methods. So first thing I did, I bought another flush 10-round magazine. Some might ask why I didn't want an extended magazine. Um, again, sometimes I'm shooting out my car window. I'll bash it on the window and make the gun jam or something like that. So I just bought another 10-rounder 10, 10 flush magazine to keep loaded in my center console. Keep this one loaded in the gun so I won't have to implement things like backup guns and partial reloads and blah, blah, blah. So, corrective actions after the necessity for using the aforementioned skills. So that having been said, I kind of hope you guys enjoyed the story. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned some um, of the lessons that I learned from this particular instance. Um, again, practice the aforementioned skills. They will come in handy at some point or another. They certainly did for me. Um, and in the event you have to use these skills, ask yourself what you can do better next time to prevent yourself from having to use them.